Okay, alhamdulillah. Um, all right, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Again, uh, sorry for that, everyone. My point was, uh, if I don't know how much it got lost in the um, in the static, but um, we were saying that ghafara means to forgive. But in Arabic, the word ghafara is related to words for to cover, to hide, or to conceal. And um, the idea being that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he forgives us, he's actually covering us, he's hiding something from us, and he's concealing something from us. And so what could that be? Well, Imam al-Raghav al-Isfahani, who is a famous scholar of Qur'an, he mentioned that this maghfirah from Allah, وَالْمَغْفِرَةَ مِنَ اللَّهِ هُوَ أَنْ يَسُونَ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ أَنْ يَمَسَّهُ الْعَذَابِ All right, subhanAllah. So he says here, and translated in English for you, that forgiveness, maghfirah, this word, maghfirah, from Allah, is his protecting, his concealing, his hiding, the worshiper from punishment touching him. Right? The idea is that when we commit sin, when we make mistakes, right, those sins, depending on the level of the sin, warrants that we get punished for that sin. And what forgiveness does is forgiveness allows us, right, to ask Allah to protect us from the consequences of our sin. And so Allah's forgiveness is his way of basically covering up our sin. It's his way of protecting us from getting the consequences of those sins. And so it's really amazing when you think about what you're asking for when you're asking for forgiveness, right? We can say, oh, Allah, please forgive me. But if I don't really understand what forgiveness is and I don't understand what Allah is actually doing, I may not realize how important it is and I may not even try my best to um, make that forgiveness as sincere as possible. Now, the amazing thing for you and I is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is someone who tells us that he forgives, right? So how does he do that? Well, one simple way that we know this is because some of Allah's names have to do with forgiveness. And I'm pretty sure, you know, based on my understanding of Allah's names, you know, this concept of forgiveness comes through in three different names at minimum that Allah has. And I don't know of another attribute of Allah you know, for example, we have the name of Rahman and Rahim. Those both have to do with mercy. So those are two names that have to do with mercy. You know, Allah has the name As-Sabir and As-Sabur, the patient and the one who is often patient. But when it comes to forgiveness, Allah has three names. He is Al-Ghafir. He is Al-Ghaffar. He is Al-Ghafur. Right, so he has three names that have to do with forgiveness. Now, you may be wondering, well, what is the difference between these three names? So, al ghafir you can translate, you know, basically as the forgiver. Right, someone does something, Allah forgives them. And that name comes twice in the Quran. The name al ghafar on the other hand, all right, that name means the oft-forgiving. And that name comes five times in the Quran. So someone who forgives often. And then you have the name Al-Ghafur. And this name comes 91 times in the Quran. Now the thing is that in English, you'll probably see them translate. You'll see people who translate Quran or translate Hadith. They'll translate Al-Ghafar and Al-Ghafur the same. The oft forgiving. Right? But there is a difference. And there is difference of opinion regarding what the difference is, but to kind of summarize it for you in an easy way, all right, Allah's name Al-Ghaffar, that pattern in Arabic language has to do with repetition. So they say that Allah's name Al-Ghaffar is given because we as human beings commit many sins. So he is often forgiving us because we consistently make mistakes. It's just part of our human nature. Whereas Al-Ghafur has to do more with the fact that he forgives all sins, 
no matter how big or how small. So one of Allah's names, Al-Ghaffar, has to do with the fact that we commit many sins. But Al-Ghafur, which comes 91 times in the Quran, right, means Allah forgives all sins, whether big or small. Of course, there's only one exception to this. There's only one sin that Allah doesn't forgive. And that's the sin of not believing in Allah, <laughs> which would defeat the whole point. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with just this root, right? I didn't even talk about other names of Allah, like Al-Afu, right? That's another name for Allah, At-Tawwab, right? There are other names that have to do with forgiveness, repentance, pardoning. I'm just trying to restrict our talk to talking specifically about the root, Ghafara, because that's where we get the word maghfirah and forgiveness from. But if we start to talk about al-afu, right, and at-tawwab, our talk will become even longer. And subhanAllah, Allah has even other ways of forgiving us of our sins and accepting our repentance. So just from this root, we already have so much meaning that Allah is the one who doesn't just forgive. He's not the one who just forgives us often. He doesn't forgive just all of our sins, big or small, but he forgives them by protecting us from the result of our sin and by covering up our sin as if we didn't even do the sin, which is the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Right? The one who repents, who, for, who asks Allah for forgiveness for his sin, it's as if he didn't commit a sin. Now, with all that being said, Right? If that wasn't enough of a proof that Allah wants to forgive you, okay, here are two hadiths to help you think about that even more. So the Prophet wasallam said, had you not committed sin, so he was talking to his sahaba, and he said, had you not committed sin, like pretend you were perfect human beings, Allah would have brought into existence, he would have created a creation that would sin, so that he would forgive them. SubhanAllah. So the point here is Allah knows that we sin. It's part of how he created us, right? In his divine uh, nature, he created human beings with the ability to sin, right? We can make choice. And we as human beings, when we use our choice to either not sin or to when we sin to repent, to turn to Allah, that is something that Allah loves. And he tells us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in another hadith, right? He tells us in another hadith that, okay, let me set the tone of this hadith for you, okay? So I don't know how many of you have ever been to a desert. I actually haven't had the chance, but I have, you know, thought about it before, right? If I were to go uh, to a desert, I just got dropped in the middle of the Sahara Desert, Right? I would have no idea which way is left, right, north, south. I would have no clue, right? Yes, if you've been to a desert in the U.S. or anywhere, a desert is a desert, right? doesn't matter. The point is, deserts are hard to figure out. It's hard to figure out where you're going in a desert. So imagine if you're alone in the desert and all you have is your camel with you, right? Camel is the usual transportation people have in a desert. So imagine you're with a camel, your camel, you're, you know, you're walking with it or you're riding the camel and then you stop for, you know, some water or you stop because you're tired and let's say you fall asleep and you wake up and your camel is gone, right? You're by yourself. You have no camel now. You're just going to think, oh man, I'm done for. Like, how am I going to get anywhere? I have no one to help me. You know, where did my camel go? I don't see its tracks anywhere because the wind blows in the desert and the wind blew the tracks away. So you're going to feel pretty hopeless. And so maybe you just decide, you know what, I have nothing better to do. I'm just going to sit and, you know, just pray that my camel comes back. And so maybe you pray, you fall asleep, you wake up and your camel is next to you. How would you feel? Right? That feeling of being in the desert and finding your camel is the feeling that the Prophet, peace upon him, draws an analogy to. And he says, Allah, Allah is happier 
to grant repentance, right, which is related to seeking forgiveness, to his worshiper than any of you would be if you found your camel that was lost in the desert. So you think you're happy when you find your camel in the desert when you were stranded by yourself, while Allah is even happier than you would be at that point to grant forgiveness to his worshiper. So the point is, Allah loves to forgive. All we have to do is ask. <laughs> Allah loves to forgive. All we have to do is ask. And so the question is, well, what's the best way to ask? And so, alhamdulillah, we have a formula. We have a way of asking. And in Arabic, the, the word for, for asking or seeking forgiveness, the verb in Arabic is istaghfara. Istaghfara. And this word comes 40 times in the Quran. And it's cool. I want to show you something really interesting with Arabic, if you didn't know this already. So you'll notice that we have here, all right, in our word, oh, let me get my laser pointer, right? We have the word ghafara, right, forgiveness. And then we have these three letters in front. And what's interesting is that these three letters in front right, ist in Arabic, they mean to seek. So when I add it to ghafara, to forgive, I get the meaning of istagfara, to seek forgiveness. So this actually works for other words in Arabic too. So just to show you an example, if I take that same prefix, ist, and I add it to a word like nasara, which means to help, and I put it together, it's like math, I'm telling you, it's really amazing. You get istansara, which means to seek help. One more, if I take ist, and I add it to adhana, right, or adhina, to, to um, permission, to have permission to do something. If I add them together, what do I get? I get istadhana, to seek permission. So in Arabic, the ist prefix, it means to seek. So istighfar or istaghfara is this process of seeking or asking for ghufran, for maghfira, for forgiveness. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us a very simple way of doing that. It's a few words. It's really easy. He taught us to say, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay. It means I. So you hear, see here how we have this Hamza now? Astaghfirullah instead of is with the kasra. Astaghfirullah means I seek forgiveness from Allah. And I turn to Him in repentance, meaning I want my forgiveness to be accepted. Now, how do we get this? We get this because we learn from the family of the Prophet, peace be upon him that the Prophet wasallam would say this dua 70 times a day or more, even outside of Ramadan. And he's the Prophet, peace upon him, he doesn't sin, right? The Prophet, peace be upon him, never sinned. And so, you know, they asked him, well, how come you do that? How come you, you know, make dua for forgiveness? And he said, should I not be a thankful servant, <laughs> right? Should I not, um, you know, for example, he would stand in the night and ask for forgiveness. And he said, I want to be thankful to Allah. And I want Allah to know that even though I have my limitations, I want Allah to know that I want him to overlook those limitations. And he's the prophet, peace be upon him. So you and I, we can follow in his way. And we can say, when we get the chance, right? Astaghfirullah. Wa atubu ilayh. Really simple dua to make. And so that's the simplest thing you can do. Make dua. But we get some bonuses in the month of Ramadan. <laughs> and I want to point out to you those bonuses that have to do with forgiveness. All right. And so the first bonus that we get in Ramadan related to forgiveness is the fact that we get to fast. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, right? Man sama Ramadan, iman and wahdi saba. Right? Whoever fasts in Ramadan with sincere faith, and seeking its reward, meaning the reward of the fast. Allah 
Allah will forgive him of his previous sins. SubhanAllah. Allah will forgive him. Allah will cover up those sins. Allah will protect you from the consequences of those sins. For doing what? For fasting in Ramadan. That's pretty awesome. That's a pretty cool perk for this month of Ramadan. Then there's a second perk. All right. It also has to do with something special that we do in Ramadan. And that's our prayer, our night prayer in Ramadan. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man Qama Ramadan. Right? They kind of rhyme. Sama Qama. Sama means to fast. Qama means to uh, stand at night. So this is your Taraweeh. This is your Qiyam and Layl in your homes. Whoever stands in prayer at night in Ramadan, the hadith reads almost exactly the same. Iman and Wahtisaba, with sincere faith and seeking its reward. Right? Allah will forgive him of his previous sins. غفر الله له ما تقدم من ذنبه and ما تقدم من ذنبه So Allah will forgive him of his previous sins. So you can say astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. You can fast in Ramadan. Allah will forgive you of your previous sins. You can stand at night in Ramadan. Allah will forgive you of your previous sins. And those two perks are related to Ramadan specifically. And then another, you know, way that you can get forgiveness is by forgiving other people, right? This is a hadith that the Prophet peace be upon him. He said, "Wagfiru," right? Forgive others. Yagfiru Allahu lakum. Allah will forgive you. And I mention this in Ramadan because in Ramadan many times uh, we make extra dua, right? Like you know, I was. Uh, as a kid, my parents would say, you know, you can write down your duas that you want to, who you want to make dua for. And, you know, sometimes we think about times when people may have harmed us, not physically, but maybe emotionally, um, you know, they said something mean to us, right? I have this classic story of um, this Power Ranger toy. Okay, so it's a funny story here. Um, when I was, I think maybe, I want to say I was six and my sister was four. All right. I loved Power Rangers at that time. And I had this red Jason Power Ranger. And one day my sister, my Abida, for those who know her, uh, she took my Power Ranger and she broke it. <laughs> and she straight up broke it. And I was so mad. Okay. I was so mad that she broke my Power Ranger and I was six. <laughs> and so. I, I don't remember this part. Maybe I maybe I made myself forget it. I don't know a lot of them. But um, a few years later, my sister Avada was looking through a drawer and she found a notebook. And in that notebook, I had actually written in the notebook a funny dua that I made to Allah about my sister for breaking my toy. You know what that dua was? <laughs> the dua was, Oh Allah. I wish that my sister's big toe would fall off. <laughs> I have no idea why I made that dua, right? Like, I just wanted her big toe to fall off. Now, what I probably should have asked for is for Allah to forgive her because she's four and she didn't realize that, you know, maybe what she was doing, or even if she did, she's still four, right? And it's not a big deal if, you know, at the end of the day, my, my little miniature action figure got broken. <laughs> right and so you know i um my parents definitely told me hey that's not how we that's not how we make dua okay <laughs> we got to learn to forgive people all right we have to forgive people and um when you forgive people allah will forgive you that's the key because we know there are times that we should um that we've also hurt someone and we want allah to forgive us for those times and for those people to forgive us. So we have to put our foot forward. We have to forgive, and then Allah will forgive us uh, in return. So it's amazing. You know, we have many avenues for forgiveness. That's why we call it the gift, right? Allah gifts us so many different ways that we can be forgiven. So to summarize, right? I've given you a few things. To summarize, 
All right. We make mistakes. It's a, it's a part of life. And Allah loves to forgive us. Allah loves to forgive us. And he has three of his names specifically related to maghfirah. Right? Al-Ghafir, Al-Ghaffar, and Al-Ghafur. And we're not even counting the other names. Like Al-Tawwab, and Al-Afu. Right? We'll put those to the side for this talk. Right? And as was the practice of the Prophet, peace be upon him, we should constantly seek forgiveness. It's what he would do, so we should do. And then he, peace be upon him, gave us a few perks and a few ways that we can be given the gift of forgiveness. So if we fast in Ramadan, Allah will forgive us. If we pray at night in Ramadan, Allah will forgive us. Right? If we forgive others, Allah will forgive us. So, alhamdulillah, right? All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is ask. And when we ask, there is a um, result that comes. And so to close this talk and to kind of get us to, um, to realize how beneficial this is, right? I mean, we know obviously it's beneficial that Allah removes from us our, our sin. But there's more to it than just that. And I want to close by taking us to a piece of the Quran, a section in the Quran. In Surah Nuh, all right, the 71st, should be 71st chapter of the Quran, where Nuh alayhi salam is actually talking to his people. And he says to them, all right, Istaghfiru rabbakum innahu kana ghaffara. So Noah is telling Allah, Fakultu, he says to Allah, so it's basically quoting him. He said, I said, Astaghfiru rabbakum. I told them to. Seek forgiveness from your Lord. Innahu kana ghaffara. Indeed, he, meaning Allah, is oft forgiving. Right? That was one of the names that we looked at. This is one of the five times that al-ghaffar comes in the Quran. So Noah said that I told them, look, hey, you know, my people, seek forgiveness from Allah. Because Allah is the often, Allah often forgives. But then he continues. And he says, all right, what's the result of this seeking forgiveness? Innahu kana ghaffara yursil as-samaa alaykum midrara. Allah will send rain from the sky upon you in continual showers. So when you seek forgiveness, Allah will send rain. Now, a quick point on this as we close. Some of you know that in Islam we have a prayer called Salatul Istisqa. We have a prayer called the prayer for seeking rain. Right? So there are times when Allah holds back the rain. And this would happen in the desert, you know, desert areas. It could happen in places that have drier climates. It could even happen here, to be honest, right? Like during a drought. Perfect. So during the drought, when there's not enough rain, the Prophet peace be upon him taught us a prayer to make. And that prayer is kind of like, in a sense, similar, but the opposite of Eid prayer. So in Eid prayer, you go, um, everyone gathers in one place. At least that's what you're like supposed to do if you have the ability. Everyone goes to one spot from the community. You all wear your best clothes. You praise Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You make takbir. Right? Because you're celebrating that day. For Salatul Istisqa, when that happens, you're actually supposed to go to that prayer. It's a community prayer in your, you know, most tattered of clothing. And you don't say Allahu Akbar. You say Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. You keep making dua for Allah to forgive. And everyone gathers. And what you try to do is if you have any debt you need to pay, if you have anyone that you need forgiveness from, go seek that forgiveness. Go try to pay that debt. And there's a khutbah, just like an Eid khutbah. And in that khutbah, they remind the, uh, the imam reminds the people to ask Allah for forgiveness. And what's the result? After praying salat al right, the rain comes. And it came at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. 
came at the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It came a couple years ago. For those of you who know of the community in California, in Southern California, they had a uh, drought. Uh, and Imam Tahir Anwar, some of you may know him. He led a, um, he led a uh, Salatul Istisqa. And they sought Allah's forgiveness. And that afternoon it rained. SubhanAllah. And there was no rain in the forecast. <laughs> it rained that afternoon. So there's a connection between seeking forgiveness and rain. Why? Because rain is Allah's mercy descending. So when you seek forgiveness from Allah, Allah will send the skies to draw, to put mercy onto you. And that's not all. All right? He sends upon you showers of rain. And then he continues and he says, وَيُمْدِدُكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا And he will increase you in wealth, وَبَنِينَ and children, and provide for you gardens, وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا And he will provide for you rivers. So when you seek forgiveness, Allah sends the rain. And if we as a community seek forgiveness, Allah will send the rain. And that rain is Allah's mercy coming down upon us. And that mercy leads to us benefiting in this life. So it's a way of increasing our amwal, our provision, our wealth, right? Spiritual wealth. It can even lead to physical wealth too. Wabanin and children, right? The fact that we can grow our communities. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتِ And Allah will place for you, provide for you gardens and rivers that flow with that water that He sent that lead to you being able to eat and to live as a community and be together with one another and to travel on the rivers to see one another. So this really is a gift, this gift of forgiveness. Allah protects us from our sin when we ask for forgiveness. And he makes it so that we get rewarded with Allah's mercy and he increases things in our life when we seek forgiveness. So if you're someone who you feel like you're struggling in this life with maybe even financial worry or maybe, you know, you're looking for, a, um, for um, help in some way, right? Ask for forgiveness. That's one of the ways to open up that gate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's our talk for today, Bidnillah, this gift of forgiveness. Uh, to check and make sure that um, uh, we were paying attention, I do have a short Kahoot game to play with all of you, as I like to do. But let's see if we have any questions first. All right, one question here. When you mentioned the hadith with, with Allah will forgive our previous sins, does that include minor and major sins? Good question. Um, so this is understood by most scholars to mean minor sins, right? Major sins, which are in reality really major, right? Like really, really, really bad things actually count as major sins. Um, those sins require more uh, direct seeking for forgiveness for those specific sins. But these acts of like Salman, the fasting Ramadan and uh, standing in the night in Ramadan, they're considered to wipe out our previous sins that are minor sins. Question, how many major sins are there? Uh, good question. I don't have a number off the top of my head, um, but there is a famous work called the Kaba'ir, the major sin, by a scholar named Imam al-Zahabi. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Imam al-Zahabi. Um, and he just lists them, okay? So if you want a list, uh, it's a good list to look at. If any of you have the book, maybe you have it in your homes, it's called, um, uh, uh, the book is called Reliance of the Traveler. It's a famous book among the Muslim community, Reliance of the Traveler. In the back of that book, that list is actually there. But you can find the list on its own uh, as well. So good Good question. Uh, and just saying, Astaghfirullah from our tongues is sufficient. Uh, so we, we hope so. Um, the idea is, the scholars have always understood that whenever you say something on the tongue, 
maybe the first few times you say it, it's not really deep in the heart. Like I could say something nice to somebody, but I don't really mean it. But that's why repet repetition is key. Like if I say something over and over and over and over and over, at some point, I'm going to believe it, right? So even if I don't have that feeling just yet, at least if I say it, it will eventually lead to my heart, inshallah, being able to really mean it, like deep down in my chest deep down in the depth of my soul so that um, I'm able to do it sincerely because sincerity is the key. We ought to be sincere and we have to, um, you know, make sure that it's not just a lip service, but you got to start there. You got to start from there and then um, it'll, it'll lodge in the heart. Inshallah. Uh, question here. How can we avoid minor sins? Because some of them I sometimes do without realizing. Good question. Um, so two things. One is uh, we have to know what counts as a sin, right? Like they, you have to actually learn those things. They're not, it's not that, you know, crazy or intuitive. It's not that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not like some complicated thing. Uh, but alhamdulillah, we have in the Quran, in the Hadith, we've, uh, Allah and the Prophet have listed out what counts as the minor sin. A nice book that kind of puts it together, okay, is a book by um, Imam al-Mawlud. It's been translated by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. Okay, the book is called The Purification of the Heart. Purification of the Heart. And in that book, Imam al-Mawlud, which Imam Hamza, uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf translated, it lists the, the sins, and then it tells you what you should do to avoid doing that sin. So it's a really nicely, it's a really nicely done book. It's actually a poem in Arabic that he then translated and then explained. So it's something that's worth reading with your family. Um, and, you know, if you're a parent, you can read it and make it even a little bit easier for your kids to understand. But it's nicely listed. And... Um, it makes you just aware of some of these things, which sometimes we're not even aware of them, as you're saying. But again, you know, you won't be held accountable for that which you're not aware of, uh, unless it causes, you know, harm to someone, and then you're going to have to figure out, well, okay, well, what did I do that caused that harm, and then take the right steps to ask that person, you know, for forgiveness. All right. So great questions. Um, I see people have been joining. Uh, the Kahoot game. Um, Brother Smay, can I just interrupt for a second? Um, yeah. I just wanted to tell everyone that uh, we do have prizes for today's Kahoot game. Um, if you win first place, it's a $10 gift card to Amazon. And if you win second place, it's a $5 gift card to Amazon. Um, if you win, please um, write your information, your name, your phone number, and the email you used to register for today's program, please write it in the comments section um, of the ch uh, in the chat box here. Um, alternatively, you can email me, and my email address is enrichment at um, You can email me that information. Last week, we had a winner who did not give me their email address, and so we were not able to send that information over. So if that person is here, if last week's winner is here, please go ahead and give me that information. So it's your name, your phone number, and the email address you use to register today. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Yasmin, for arranging for that. Um, so yeah, now the, the stakes have been raised. <laughs> so let's see if uh, you all are able to um, win a, a nice prize while learning something new, alhamdulillah. Or inshallah, if it's not new, it's at least a reminder. Okay, so we have people joining. Um, all right, let's see, when we get to 20, we'll give it one more minute, and then we'll go ahead and start. Ah, no problem, Yusuf. All right, so I am, um, usually I would have the little Kahoot, Kahoot tune in the background, but because I had to change my audio setup, you're not going to hear it, so I'll just try to make the noise myself to keep it lively, <laughs> inshallah. All right, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's get started. All right, the gift of forgiveness, 10 questions. 
The first 10 days of Ramadan are mercy, forgiveness, or emancipation from the fire. Well, I guess the sound is coming. All right, good, good. So the first 10 days, right? According to the hadith of Salman al-Farisi, the first 10 days of Ramadan have to do with mercy. So we are now, you know, completing those first 10 and entering the next 10. Very nice, very nice. I didn't know Goku, mashallah, uh, is a real person. That's pretty awesome. Okay, next thing. The middle 10 days of Ramadan are, <laughs> right, forgiveness or emancipation from the fire. Good, forgiveness. So I had to, you know, bring it down to two. So remember, the first 10 days are for mercy. The second 10 days, forgiveness, right? That's why we had this talk. And the last third has to do with freeing from the fire, Allah pardoning us, saving us from the fire. All right, pointer in the lead. Next question. The linguistic meaning of ghafara is to show, to seal, to cover, to wear. Good, it's to cover, to conceal, to hide. Well, my pointer is still in the lead. Next question. The name al Ghafur indicates Allah forgives all types of sin, big and small, or that Allah forgives us constantly because we commit many sins. Ooh. All right, so the actual answer for this is that Allah forgives all types of sin, big and small. al ghafar all right, we said, indicates the consistency of our sin. So the red would be al ghafur the blue would be al ghafar Okay, let's keep going. The Arabic prefix ist means to protect, to forgive, to seek, or to cause. Very good. Ist means to seek. Istaghfara, to seek forgiveness. Istata'ama, to seek food. Istazana, to seek permission. In which surah does Prophet as people to seek forgiveness? Was it Al-Araf, Ashura, Hud, or Nuh? Good. So the 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 ayah that I gave you all is from Surah Nuh. But actually, for those of you maybe you know uh, uh, more Quran, he also mentioned this in Surah Hud. So I put it there as a correct answer uh, as well. Okay, pointer is still in the lead, mashallah. How many times is the name al ghaffar mentioned in the Quran? One, five, or 91? Five. Okay, Al Ghafur is ninety one times. Al Ghafar is five times. All right, no movement there. Stayed the same. All right, let's see. 
whoever fasts in Ramadan sincerely, Allah will forgive him of future sins, previous sins, or major sins. Good. Previous sins. Previous sins. All right. Okay. Two more questions. What is the first result of seeking forgiveness in the advice of Prophet Nuh to his people? Is it Allah increases them in wealth? Allah increases them in children? Allah sends rain showers upon them? Or Allah gives them gardens and rivers? Nice. All right, let's see. Last question to see if, uh, who will come out on top when you're still holding the lead. Allah is happier to forgive us than someone who lost his blank in the desert. Friend, camel, water vessel, or way? Yes, camel. The hadith is about losing a camel in the desert, and Allah is happier than that person who found that camel. All right, let's see who our winners are. Akib is in third place. Congratulations. I'm not sure how to read that for a second, and then pointer came out first. <laughs> All right, Lysander came fourth, Goku fifth. Zaha, thanks for playing. So, pointer, you can put your information uh, in the Zoom chat, um, or you can email enrichment at mclanemuslim.org directly, right? Name, phone number, and email address. And um, uh, Sister Yasmin will follow up with your prize, inshallah. Also, the All second right. place winner, please. Uh, oh, and second place too. Nice. Yes, sir. Yeah, so second place as well. Go ahead and and do that, inshallah. All right. Well, inshallah, all of you were able to benefit uh, from that. And um, bismillahi ta'ala, you will have a great, you know, second half. Well, not second half. Second, third, and final third of Ramadan, bismillahi ta'ala. Zafar